Skuyo, the courtesan of death and the leader of the hacker. She is a woman who did not want to have her life choices dictated to her, and so to pursue her own path in life, threw away her womanhood in order to show respect and resolve towards her goal of protecting Hinawa, her role model, and Yoshiwara, her home. If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell, as I cannot explain to you how much such a small action could do for this channel. And if you want to go the extra mile and support me even further, you can always check out my Patreon. Anyway, on with the video. Skuyo was sold at a young age to Yoshiwara, the underground red light district free from the eyes of the government and the law. It is a place which brings great pleasure to some, but great misfortune and pain to others. All women born there were destined to become, how should I say this on YouTube, adult workers, and so Skuyo was the same. However, she could not approve of such a life and saw her home as a cruel place that she wanted no part of. She not only didn't want her life laid out for her, but also felt a great distaste towards the other women of Yoshiwara, who seemingly just accepted their fate without resistance. However, there was one person who changed her outlook on Yoshiwara, one person who showed her there was more to it than just accepting your fate and living obediently. And that, of course, was Hinawa. Skuyo was so inspired by Hinawa that she vowed to become a protector not of Yoshiwara, but of Yoshiwara's son, Hinawa. She chose her own fate and dedicated it to Yoshiwara, but of course did so of her own accord. And how did she go about this? Well, that was by approaching Jiraiya, leader of the hacker, and asking to become his apprentice. Here she learned the skills of a ninja and forged herself into a weapon for Yoshiwara. However, in Skuyo's mind, it wasn't as simple as just becoming a ninja, so in a show of resolve, she scarred her own face, symbolically throwing away her womanhood. As if she isn't a woman, then she can't be of use to Yoshiwara as an adult worker, and so can be nothing but a weapon of Yoshiwara. Her scar on her face also symbolically ties her to Jiraiya, who also has a disfigured face, and although the two are very much foils for one another, that is something we will discuss in a bit. She worked as a defender of Yoshiwara diligently, however tragedy struck and her master Jiraiya died while sacrificing himself to protect Skuyo. At least that is what Skuyo thought at the time. With her master gone, Skuyo had no choice but to assume the position of leader of the Yaka, but it wasn't what she expected, as part of defending the women of Yoshiwara was killing the women of Yoshiwara. Those who tried to escape or not bringing in money or simply couldn't attract customers due to scars at old age were deemed as targets for assassination. Skuyo's duty, her path in life, was to protect Yoshiwara, but to do so she had to harm the people she desired to protect. So did Skuyo do it? Did she honour her duty despite her own feelings? Of course not. Skuyo's most defining aspect after all is choosing to do what she wants to do. She not only chose her, what her path in life to walk was, but also how to walk it. So she didn't kill those women, instead she faked their deaths and allowed them to join the Hyaka and to walk a new path in life, a path different from the one they were always told to live. The Yoshiwara in Flames arc, along with being one of the most thematically rich arcs in the entire series, is also the arc in which Skuyo first appears. This arc is about freedom, about the freedom to live the way you want under the sun. Yoshiwara is a city of endless pleasure, and of an endless night. Since the city is underground, dawn can never come, and so it is always night. In other words, it is a place of eternal darkness and eternal hardship for those who live there. Only when Hoshin is defeated and the roof is opened, is the endless night broken, the sun is revealed and as such dawn arrives, which matches up with one of the core themes of the entire series, that being, there can't be light without the dark. No matter how dark it gets, no matter how long the night may seem, the dawn will always come and so will the light. And in the case of the citizens of Yoshiwara, this dawn came literally with the sun being revealed and their freedom to choose who they want to be, happening at the very same time. And although nearly all the adult workers chose to remain as adult workers, the key word here is chose. They were no longer forced to, they now had the freedom of choice and could do what they wanted to do. Something which of course links Suyo to the arc as a whole, as what is her main character trait is that she will do what she wants and walk the path she wants to walk of her own volition. Due to the actions of the Yoyorose, the citizens of Yoshiwara were given the freedom that Suyo had fought for, for her entire life. And for Skuyo specifically, she gained one more freedom she didn't have before, and that is the freedom to be a woman. She scarred her face to throw away her womanhood, she thought being a protector meant losing that part of her, as she only ever associated womanhood with being an adult worker. But once she is free to roam under the sun and meets the rest of Gintama's female cast, she understands there is more to womanhood than the pretty face, and so learns to once more embrace her womanhood. Be it pretending to be an adult worker or blushing around in Toki, what matters is that she is now no longer confined by the idea of one path to walk. Under the sun we have the freedom to walk wherever we want. 
Unlike the thin streets of Yoshiwara, where you have to walk a set path, on the surface world you can do and be whatever you want to be. And this is why Gintoki and Suyo's relationship is so important for her character, as it shows her embracing a side of her she thought she threw aside, as she now has the freedom to be whoever she wants and take back even the things she threw away. Yoshiwara was an arc about walking your own path, about how your bloodline doesn't define who you are, about how blood relations aren't what make a parent and a child a parent and a child, and of course, as I keep saying, is an arc about having the freedom to choose. So I think I've now made very clear how important the idea of freedom of choice is to Skuyo's character, and how after the Yoshiwara and Flames arc, she was no longer shackled by the single path in life she had chosen and can now live however she wanted. That all said, it wasn't like seeing the sun and having Hosen defeated completely broke her shackles, as there is a man called Jiraiya, her dead master, the man who allowed her to walk a path different from that of an adult worker. In the Red Spider arc, it's revealed that Jiraiya is still alive, when he is confronted by Skuyo and Kintoki as they investigated a strain of illegal drugs in Yoshiwara. A fight ensues and Skuyo is captured and held captive by her master. He explains to her that she was meant to abandon her sense of self and not to rely on others so that she would become a copy of him and ultimately kill him so that he would die by his own hands. And so to make her feel this pain, Yoshiwara, the city she vowed to protect, was set ablaze. It was Yoshiwara in flames. Wait, sorry, wrong arc. Jiraiya though didn't do this out of hatred or spite or anything of the sort, he did all this as it's what he thought was best for her, and because he wanted to die by his own hands. Jiraiya placed value on strength and on being self-dependent, due to his own experiences in life, he saw relying on others as weakness, and so in order to help Skuyo in his own way, he tried to make her become strong by being like him, being someone who was self-dependent. However, this is a flawed way of thinking. Skuyo relied on Jiraiya as her master, and when he died, she was forced to be self-dependent. This though didn't give her strength at all, and only when she met the Yoyorozu was she once again able to rely on others, and this brought her happiness. Jirai believed that you cannot protect something if you have to worry about connections and feelings. In essence, you have to sacrifice everything, even yourself, and this is the reason Skiro gave up her womanhood, as this was necessary for her to become a protector in Jiraiya's eyes. And honestly, why do all the Skiro arcs have such thematic relevance on the series? as this idea of what it means to protect is also one of Gintama's biggest themes up there with the idea of there not being light without the dark, as one of the big lessons taught through the story of Gintama is what it means to be a samurai, and of course as we should all know, a samurai is someone who protects what they cherish with all their heart. And since Jiraiya counters this idea, instead proposing that protection should come without heart, as your heart must be thrown away to be a protector, then Jirai becomes a perfect Gintama antagonist as he directly opposes one of the series' key lessons. And as Jirai attempts to burn down Yoshiwara and turn Skuyo into his true successor, something happens. He is proven wrong. As Gintoki stabs him through the hand and says something very important. Gintoki in this moment disproves everything Jiraiya preached, as it was due to Skuyo's apparent weakness, her care for her friends, she was saved, as Gintoki was someone she could rely on. And even more beautiful is that only moments before Jiraiya attempted to scar Skuyo even more, to make her unrecognisable to her friends, just like how he had tried to make her lose her womanhood before. But what does Gintoki call her? A woman. As no scars will ever take away your identity, be it your womanhood or the people who can call you friend. Some may say that this is just Gintoki, a man, saving a damsel in distress, but to say that means you completely miss the point of Skuyo's character. It was only when she relied on Hinawa that she relied on someone for the first time, that she first attained happiness. She was able to walk her own path in life due to the support of her friends, and it was due to these friendships that now in her hardest hour, she had help. If she had done as Jiraiya wanted and ended up in this situation, then she would have had no hope. No matter how strong you may be, if you have no one to rely on, no one to ask for help, then once you're in a situation like this, it's over. Connection yet again, another main theme of Gintama, is what saves people. And something I think really sums up this beautiful sentiment is the name of the second to last episode of the Red Spider arc. The more precious the burden, the more difficult it is to shoulder it. When Jiraiya is defeated, his mindset is proven wrong, as he is nothing but a coward who was too afraid of losing those things precious to him, so threw away his own identity to prevent the pain from seeping in. Skuyo is far stronger than he ever was. Why? Because he felt pain, but even so knew that that pain was worth it, that sure you may feel lost by connecting with others, but you will also feel joy. 
She was strong because she wasn't afraid to make connections and so could walk under the sun, taking her own path unlike her master who had to stay under the moon. The fact she was the one to finish him off with her kunai is also significant as it is symbolic of her carrying her master's final burden. She didn't throw away everything like he did and so is able to bear the burden of loss and of the pain that comes of it. She forgives her master in the end as he is still that, her precious master, but unlike him she wouldn't respond to loss by throwing away her sense of self and instead would embrace the loss and process it properly, which who would you bloody know it is one of the other biggest themes of Gintama. For the rest of the series we see Skuyo develop little by little, she becomes more confident and she makes more and more friends. She has fun and lives without having to constantly think of nothing but protecting. The fact she gets so drunk after a single sip is indicative of this, as this is symbolic of how even a little bit of connection that she didn't have before could change her so much. And that is what connection does, it brings happiness. Sure there is sadness as well, but there is the bad in all things good. And with connection, the good surely does outweigh the bad. Skuyo is a fan favourite character and before writing this video, I can't exactly say I was one of those fans, but now I'm sitting down and recording this video, my opinion has wholeheartedly changed. Not only is she a nuanced and emotionally complex character, but her storylines and the arcs she is prominent in are so significant thematically to Gintama as a story. And this might sound a bit weird, but I think in a way she's also a foil to Gintoki, something I will explain properly in my 2K special Gintoki and Acid video. And honestly, one of my favourite parts of making these videos is that I can discover a new love for a character like I have today. Askuyo is a brilliant character, a woman who wanted to protect something so much she resolved to throw everything away to do so. A woman who wanted to walk her own path and a woman who realised that true strength doesn't come from sacrifice but from connection of shouldering the pain of loss and not running away from it. And she is without a doubt one of Gintama's best characters and is one of the best female characters in all of Shonen. <laughs> Comment of the week comes from Darkly Dextanian, and I'm glad that it's very appreciated the uh, special touch I gave to the Shinobu video. If you are interested in my literary endeavours, why not check out my books Gang Through Justice and People of Fate Volume 1, available at Amazon.com. And if you want to help support this channel even further, then consider pledging to my Patreon, where for as little as £2.75 a month, you can get your name at the end of the video like Hikari Desu, 7SO and Smokey McBobby. So with all that said and done, I have been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I am signing out. Stay safe, everyone.